OK, we're going to assign our dataset fields to widgets on the repeated canvas. To recap, we already had a default action on item load that you get when you drop a repeater into the page. This default case populates values from the first column. We know this works, so the sensible thing to do in this scenario is to duplicate it and edit it for our new widgets. So go ahead and copy this and paste it. Now all we have to do is update this duplicate case with the correct settings for the second column, the source column. Uncheck name shape, check source shape. Now the value needs to refer to the second column in our dataset source, so we'll open the edit text dialog to do this. OK, so this function refers to the name column in our dataset. This could be edited if you're feeling confident, but it's much safer to delete this and click the insert function hyperlink to find the source field we are looking for. You will find under the heading of repeater slash dataset. And here it is, item.source. OK. OK again to close the case editor. If everything went right for you, you should now see the dummy source text on the second shape in our repeater. Great. OK, a bit more practice on that one. We'll do the same for the description field before we get on to loading images in repeaters. Copy and paste the action again. Open the case editor. and check the description shape in configure actions. Choose item.description. OK and OK. And now we see the dummy description values appearing in the media list widget canvas. Finally, we'll add the price values in the same fashion. Copy and paste the action. Set the text on the price shape. Change to item.price. OK, so now we know how to load text data into the repeater using repeater item interactions. Next, we're going to arrange these widgets across the adaptive views.